start off with um, McLeod's four enablers of employee engagement. So I'm sure we all know that you know, one of the key enablers is the concept of the engaging manager. Managers who can win people's hearts and minds um, at all levels within the organisation. So managers who can engage people both emotionally and intellectually with, with the work and with the organisation's core purpose. Um, and this, this very much mirrors some CIPD research called Shaping the Future, which was um, an 18 month study of um, six public and private sector organisations looking at the drivers of sustainable organisation performance and again that identified the concept of distributed leadership, the importance of, of leadership, leadership at, at all levels of the organisation. Now I think um, these um, have uh, engagement, um, the concept of engagement has, has real um, implications for what we understand about leadership within organisations. Um, so I think you know traditionally leadership is is regarded as you know the realm of the executive board or, or the management team, and management is about um, uh, delivering on strategy, executing on strategy, um, managing processes, and, and the more transactional management of, of people. Um, but if if we if we accept it, we need to engage our people. We need to inspire. Uh, Outstanding customer service. We need um, to. We need um, uh, innovation and continuous improvement coming from the from the front line. Then I think we, we need a much broader understanding of the concept of, of leadership. Um, and the um, the leadership um, expert Beverly Allen Metcalf wrote a, a piece, um, a research insight for CIPD called Engaging Leadership, and she notes that given the, the context in which organisations are operating today, so incredibly um, fast, fast change, increasing um, economic uh, competitiveness, competitiveness um, that um, the, the traditional command and control styles of, of leadership are inadequate. They encourage dependency and passivity within the workforce. So she, she says that, um, you know, her, her, her theory is that um, you know, we, we no longer need an emphasis on heroic leaders. So the sort of the, you know the Fred Goodwins of this world, if you will, <laughs> a heroic leader. Um, and we we need leaders who can inspire leadership in others. So it's, it's how leaders enable and inspire other people that is now increasingly important. And that that. Um, runs true at executive board, at board level. So we need chief executives who understand that type of leadership. But we also need that sort of leadership at, at um, middle management level, but also on the front line. Um, and we've, um, we have started, CIPD started to, to put some meat on the bone, okay, on, on what does this sort of leadership look like in practice? So we've been doing some research, um, which is um, based on about eight organisations, um, about, uh, hundreds of interviews with employees and uh, interviews and, and surveys with, with managers around what behaviours actually drive employee engagement. And in shorthand, they are things like you know managers who coach and mentor, um, joint involvement in uh, decision making, joint problem solving, listening, but also an interest in individuals having some interest in people's lives outside work, so you understand if they are going through some sort of trauma in their life outside work, because that, that will impact on how they engage, how they perform in the workplace. As a manager, you need that emotional intelligence and engagement, um, and, and you need that across the organisation. Um, so what does this mean for HR? Well, I think um, HR has to be very clear about its role in building this type of, of leadership capability within organisations. So the starting point, I think, is um, working with the organisation to identify the, the, the core values. So what is the culture you want, you want to create? And then how do your leadership behaviours, um, uh, the sort of behaviours that managers, you want managers to exhibit on a day-to-day on -day basis, how do you develop those? So you know, developing some sort of, of core competency framework and language so that there is a common language about what leadership is, is within the organisation because I think the concept of leadership management is so vague you've got to really pin it down and say what does and I think one of the other conversations we need to be clear about what does good look like um, so, so the HR and the business understands what we mean by leadership um, the other thing is is then 
data. So you need to be able to ensure that from your performance appraisal system, um, 360 degree <coughs> staff surveys, you have an idea of the leadership capability within your organisation against the sort of um, behaviours you're trying to develop. And so you know where your gaps are, you know who the weak managers are and the strong managers are. And and then, and this, this is the, the tricky thing, is the learning interventions that actually make the difference. Um, because I think traditionally we've had too many sort of sheep dip approaches to, to leadership development. You, you know, it's a one size fall, uh, um, one size fits all approach. Um, and not surprisingly, people are, uh, over time, um, they become more cynical about leadership development because it's, it's, it's never been followed through. And it's not bespoke, so it needs to, it needs to to res resonate with people's individual learning styles, um, and there is this is the area where where I think you know well, we know that you need more research because the, the research on, on the, the, the learning interventions that, that actually change behaviour is very sparse. The the areas where there is some research so are around um, identity. So if people see themselves as a leader, if they if they I think their role is as as they have a leadership role, then they're more likely to act as a leader. And the one is around, another one is, a, is, a, is around learning orientation, which I think is very straightforward. So, you know, people need to want to learn. So you have to explain to people why it's in their interest to become a leader. Um, what's in it for them? And the final thing is, the final um, element identified the research there is, is around um, the need to be able to act authentically, to sort of be oneself. And that, again, I think raises questions about, we also need to make sure that we have career paths for people who should never be leaders, that are equally rewarding, um, we, you know, that they they are good alternative career paths to being a manager because we should never; those people should never ever manage people. So those are the areas that we are CRP is really interested in, in exploring. What? How do you change behaviour? We need more. We need more data on it. But we need um, better practice because the only way ultimately we're going to engage people and drive employee engagement is through how lead how, how managers lead on, on a day-to-day -day basis.